To start uh, the discussion forward on, on the future uh, next stages of innovation in Guelph, I uh, really want to clearly under, underline that this the GPI is a success story. It's not a story of, of failure. It's not a story of, of something that didn't work out. It really is a story of developing a conversation to form the basis of the next conversation. And that's really where we're at this morning. The, the board of GPI continues to be active in, in the community. The Chamber of Commerce is taking a, a lead role uh, because we are a not-for-profit. Uh, we are able to follow some of the governance requirements going forward as a not-for-profit. The Chamber of Commerce has been active in Guelph for 142 years, so there is some stability, we hope, going forward. Um, Chambers of Commerce have different roles in different communities, but the Chamber of Commerce role in the community of Guelph is, is a little on the unique side because of the role that the university plays, a key role as a, as a partner, as, as really the, I think this month they're the largest employer in Guelph. Um, some months they're the second largest employer in Guelph, uh, next to Linamar, our, our uh, automotive parts manufacturer who doesn't make a lot of automotive parts, but they do a lot of things uh, in, man in advanced manufacturing now. I shouldn't say they don't make a lot of automotive parts because they actually, they actually continue to be the second largest manufacturer of that, that sector in Canada, but they also do uh, components for a lot of other industries. So advanced manufacturing and education are clearly leading the way in Guelph in terms of, of uh, our, our footprint. And so the Chamber of Commerce in Guelph really has a lot of activity around those two areas. To put it into, into a pie context, um, Peter mentioned the Prosperity 2020 base analysis of the community. Coming out of that base analysis was, was really a snapshot of the mix of industry we have. And you see on the slide, when I say that it, manufacturing and education are important to the business community, you can see why I'm saying that. You can also see why agritech and bio and functional foods have been a, a part of our, our discussion over the last seven years. Um, in other communities, you, you would see a whole different mix of business. So it's very important that those three areas work well together. And we, we have seen through the GPI discussions how, how bioplastics are playing a role at, at some of the manufacturers in Guelph, how soy oil is being used as a replacement for petroleum oil, and that Guelph really led, led the charge on developing some of the alternate uses of, of plant and bioproducts in the marketplace in, in advanced materials that go into advanced manufacturing. We look at the, the environmental technology sector and it's a very thin orange slice there um, that, or I'm sorry, it's a thin blue slice there, the clean tech sector, but really influences the rest of what we do. The, Guelph, the University of Guelph graduates half of Canada's environmental engineers. So that gives us a strategic advantage over other communities. When you look at the ICT sector, that's the thin orange line in there. Uh, we have an incredibly active ICT sector in Guelph and that supports manufacturing, does most of their work outside of Canada, let alone outside of Guelph. And we're trying to bring them into the conversation to say, we have a lot of strength in the community that we don't take advantage of, and how can we bring them into the rest of our business community to help make those connections? So the IT, I'll just give you part of the conversation from the IT sector that the Chamber's been involved with. It's what would we be doing with the ag businesses? Don't you have to own a cow to do work in that sector? You know, that's one of the, one of the direct quotes. And I say, well, what about the mobile communications when you're out on the field and you want to know what the price is of the commodities that you're harvesting or you want to communicate with your suppliers or you want to get the latest news on, on the fertilizer products? Or what's your mobile communication strategy as a farm? And farming is big business now. What about the global positioning systems on your combine and how do you connect your, your combine to, to satellite technology. So IT 
whether it's mobile communications, whether it's, it's uh, innovations in food processing, uh, IT has to play a role, and we're very fortunate. The, the University of Guelph does a lot of things very well, as everybody knows. And one of the things they do very well is IT and the training through the College of Management and Economics, and they have a group there that is focused on that area. So quite often the University of Guelph is synonymous with ag business because for over 100 years we've led Canada in the ag technologies. But the investment in other technologies at the university is something that we want to take full advantage of as a community. The financial sector, Guelph was the starting point for the co-op movement in Ontario. So what does that mean to the rest of business? It means how do we finance our businesses? Some, sometimes we can use the co-op model as one of our opportunities, and that's something that's very, very familiar to the farming community out west and familiar out here. So we've put together an innovation advisory council, and we've taken those sectors and grabbed some rep representation from some of the leading companies in Guelph to say, what does innovation mean to your business and how can we support your business moving forward? Linamar transitioning from an auto parts manufacturer into manufacturing advanced uh, components for all kinds of in industries. Um, you look at uh, Blunt Canada making chainsaws but really leading the way on, on lean, tech and lean implementations. McNeil Consumer Healthcare on, on pharmacy, on, on, uh, on some of the medical products that they put together. Um, Pavico Plastics is using soya oil in some of their plastics components. Uh, Polycon, division of Magna, is also using soya products. So the conversation continues through some of these other technologies. And going down the list, you can see that it is quite a list. And we're hoping that that Innovation Advisory Council at some point in the near future will turn into uh, uh, an Innovation Advisory Board that will have an organization under them. And we've made, we've made application to the Ministry of Research and Innovation and hope, hopefully we'll have, have a group uh, that will be reporting up to this council. But even that aside, it's been very important over the last six months for us to have conversations as a group to say, what does Guelph need for the future? And how can we help the Ontario economy get through the recession and into the new, uh, into the new economic cycle? So looking at if we had an innovation center, and really we've got an innovation council at this point, what are the groups that report in? to the, the, that, that group that uh, meets around the boardroom table at Miller Thompson right now. Uh, we've got ICT, we've got clean tech, we've got advanced manufacturing, financial services, wellness, biotech, ag, ag businesses, the university, global markets, funding agencies, business groups, the Ontario Network of Excellence is something that's emerging for the province, uh, provincial, federal, municipal, government, and the Ontario Centers of Excellence, IRAP, NSERC, and the other federal agencies, provincial agencies that are involved in funding. And then all of those connected together, and then all of the crosstalk that goes between clean tech and manufacturing, manufacturing IT, biotech, and manufacturing. Those aren't islands, those are interconnected groups of businesses that are employing people and employing more people, and we want to encourage that. So we're looking with the Ontario Network of Excellence and how can Guelph connect up to that and looking at the Ontario Network of Excellence, which we'll hear a little bit about in a minute or two, being one of the areas that the province says the economy is transitioning. The Ontario Chamber of Commerce is very involved in the transition of traditional manufacturing into other areas of employment. Expanding the Ontario Centres of Excellence and NSERC program activity in Guelph, making sure that the research activities between business are connected to the research activities of the university. We've been working with IRAP in the last year through the Chamber of Commerce with uh, connecting IRAP funding to projects in the city. And this month, this coming month, we're going to be doing a business survey to say from the businesses, give us your details. Where would you like to see us head as a community so that we can feed into the community economic development strategy that Peter Cartwright and his team are working on? So here we are at breakfast, the first of a series. 
We're going to have breakfast uh, coming up on December 9th uh, from North Carolina, their, their bio, uh, bio uh, research center. What are they doing there where they've taken economic development around biotechnology from $10 million to $100 million in activity in North Carolina? Looking at the University of Guelph Business Development Office, Miller Thompson is going to be bringing in a, a, a speaker from outside of Guelph to talk about advanced technology and, and how that fit, feeds into um, the, uh, the patents and, and, uh, and uh, research going forward. And then RBC will be sponsoring our last breakfast that will talk about angel networks and venture capital financing. How do you pay for all this in innovation? So the discussion continues. And uh, you can see it's a complex discussion, and it takes a community to have that discussion. And so the Chamber is very proud and pleased to be able to help to serve the community in that way of making those connections.